Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking about one of really the most interesting, contentious, emotional issues before the Metro Council right now, and that is short-term rental properties. What should we do? Things like Airbnb or or um, rent uh, vacation vacation rental, vacation rental by owners. What should Nashville do about those properties? And there are people that have strong opinions on both sides. We have with us uh, Council Member Berkeley Allen, Council Member at Large Bob Mendez, and several calls. Let's go to the phones. Omid. Hello, Omid. This is me. Yes, go right ahead. Good. Hi, how are you? Um, nice to see you, Councilwoman Allen. Uh, I got your email Good. earlier. I am calling because... Hello? Go right ahead. Yeah, you're on. Okay. Uh, I'm calling to, to basically, you know, ask that... Um, my question is, is, I'm hearing Councilman Mendez saying that these are businesses. Now, again, if, if we're looking at them as businesses, uh, and we're putting them into residential neighborhoods, where will this stop? You know, I mean, who, where is this going to stop somebody from opening up a garage in their backyard in a garage, uh, you know, opening up a, a dog daycare center? I mean, you're, you're basically, you know, have opened a door that could go anywhere at this point, you know, because you really the reason you're giving in to these people and catering to these SCR owners is because they want to make money. That's what you keep going back to. You don't want to step in the way of their livelihood. But... For those of us who live around them, and I do, and uh, to the host, I'll let you know that I'm somebody that's been opposed to these since I heard about it in 2014. Okay. Uh, but I have one down the street from me right now that's a 2,600-square-foot house that was bought by a law professor from MTSU who is running it as an SPR, non owner occupied obviously. Um, she doesn't have a permit, hasn't had one since September. Uh, this is what's going on around us. You know, she advertises it for 16 people and is making $800 a night on the weekends on this. Wow. Gold rush. And, and it's not going to stop. And there's no enforcement that's going to So what you would like to see is just a ban on these things. Take it out. I mean, Take all these cities around the world, Austin, uh, New York, San Francisco, all these cities, that are, they're completely banning it. You know, we are uh, one step behind. All right, well, let's talk about that. So here a neighborhood person neighborhood groups there are a lot of neighborhood groups that feel that way mm -hmm. that that should not be in a neighborhood it is a business we have zoning um, you know regulations so ban them what what do both of you think about that I'll go first because um, I, I know you email a lot with this gentleman <laughs> um, so we already talked about the idea that business in neighborhood where, uh, um, has happened for a long time for long-term rentals. The short-term rentals are different because of the variety of people that it brings in. I have a permitted short-term rental immediately across the street from my house. On uh, the path where my wife and I walk our dog, I pass at least two other uh, permitted ones and one that I think is not permitted. Um, by and large, they're okay. They're fine. Um, there are lots of problem units um, at, where there's a higher concentration in the 12 South, Germantown, Salem Town, and parts East Nashville. It is truly obnoxious um, in some places when you get the high concentration and your neighborhood basically turns over every weekend. It is obnoxious um, and we, we have to find the right balance. A lot of what the caller mentioned is enforcement and I think the city recognizes that it is uh, currently terrible at real-time enforcement of existing noise, parking, garbage laws. If you try to make a noise complaint at one in the morning, there is no response from Metro that's timely. Um, best case scenario, police car, um, when they're done policing it, uh, right. crimes, will roll by an hour or two later. That's the best we're able to manage so far. We've got to get better at the enforcement. I know the neighborhood people think that that's um, a total dead end, but we have to get better at enforcing um, these uh, violations that happen in the middle of the night, and right now we don't do that. And he mentioned other cities, um, and I think he threw out Austin, and I, I'm not well versed on what other cities have done, but what, what, are, what are you all seeing? I'm sure you're studying this. Are other cities banning these things, or are other cities more of a happy medium, or you have a whole hodgepodge? So, when, again, when we started this process in 2012, at that point, San Francisco and New York were still trying to figure out what to do. 
In the process, both of them banned them and taxed them at the same time, which I found fascinating. Um, we at least said, if we're going to tax them, it's because you're legal. They have gone through several iterations of banning and then saying, well, under certain circumstances, I'm sure they're not through with this process just as we're not through with this process. Austin, who we modeled our 3% um, our limit off of, and I'll talk about that more in a minute, um, has since banned the non-owner occupied, the investor type. Um, and they have spelled they, they have spelled out a phase out over through from now till 2022. Um, so they've said this particular type is a problem. They have not banned the type where the owner lives in the house. Okay. Uh, so they haven't banned everything, and they also have not banned them in apartments, which is and, another type. And for, so. for me, the the key point about this is it's the. The laws nationwide in different cities are moving extremely quickly. A year ago today, Airbnb had, as a matter of principle, um, never agreed to help any city enforce any law at all. Um, since then, they've been sued by San Francisco and New York, and they've agreed, I think, on a handful of cities, very large cities in Europe and in the U.S., to begin to help municipalities enforce their laws. And um, hopefully, that's the direction the future is uh, these sharing economy um, hosting sites actually participate in forcing the rules. I've made it clear to lobbyists for the short-term rental industry that I'll never support a bill that they want so long as they refuse to help Metro um, figure out who's got a permit and who's paying taxes. Which mm -hmm. in that last call was an issue. He's claiming the, the house near him has, has no permit and you said at the top there are 2,000 permitted, maybe there are 4,000. So we know there are a lot that don't have a permit. But the question, yeah, who would go in and say, you have no permit, stop doing this? Who, who would even do that? So we, I mean, we have, it on the books, we have a way to deal with that. It's just making it actually work. And we, we, through the last summer, have had several community meetings, and in response to those community meetings, passed several bills during the summer, one of which give, was giving codes the authority to put a stop work order on a house that literally would be a plaque on the front door that the guest would see when they show up that says this is not supposed to be operating as a short-term rental. Um, that theoretically gives them more teeth. Um, if the plaque comes down, then they've got even more teeth if they have to go to court. Part of the, the problem has been the whole process of um, notifying and then having the owners actually comply or not comply takes time. If they don't comply, then you have to take them to environmental court. That takes time. And that process just hasn't worked well, which is why we feel like the environmental, the consultants' recommendations hopefully will deal with some of those issues and enable them to work better, which we've got to do regardless. Even, even if we ban all of these, we still need ways for codes to deal with the ones where people say, I don't care if they're banned, I'm going to do this anyway. So it's really important for us to get that piece right. Okay, we have a bunch of calls, so now we're going to take a break, and then I'm just going to come back. We'll go through these calls. If you're on the line, hold on. There are two lines open. There's the number at the bottom, but we will take a break, come back, and go through all the calls. Be back right after this.